are literally shaping the planet. Purpose is the only pathway to a regenerative future. We have a choice to stay with the status quo or to change. What is the point of trying to be just resilient when we can actually innovate? Okay, so we're going to talk about the art pay, the the art of the one pager. Uh, the one pager is the document that you should have, or you should be putting together right away when we're done, uh, which summarizes the critical points of your startup. Now, uh, a lot of people think they know what the one pager is for, but they really don't. Right? They have kind of a vague purpose, and what I want you to keep in mind is the really only purpose of the one pager is to get you the meeting. So let me put that in context for you. Um, you know, I, I think of this in terms of a sales funnel, right? So just like you have different stages in a sales funnel where you start off with a bunch of prospects and then you know, you'll have an initial conversation, a short conversation to qualify them. And once they're qualified, you'll have a long conversation, maybe a demo, and then it gets deeper as you bring in more and more stakeholders. Uh, you know, this is kind of a typical upside down triangle uh, that they teach you. Um, you have the same approach to raising money, right? So you've got a, a bunch of prospects at the top of the list. These are people who you think might be good investors for your round. Uh, and yes, we do have a, another, another deck, the art of prospecting for investors, if you're interested. Um, but then like once you've got that list of potential investors, uh, you're going to reach out to them or you're going to try to pitch them. So your next step down in that is your elevator pitch, for instance, right? So, you know, this is your 30 second, like, hey, here's what we do. Uh, it might be something that you use when you go up to uh, the table after a pitch competition and you're talking to the investors at that table, along with 40 other people behind you. Uh, or it might be, you know, a, a one or two, three or four sentence email that you're sending to a mutual acquaintance to hopefully make a warm intro for you. That little pitch gets you to the point where you know, they just ask you questions like, oh, wait, I'm kind of interested. You know, tell me a little bit more. So you get about three minutes of their attention. Or that, if it's in the context of a warm intro request, that gets the target to say, oh, I'm interested, you know, make the connection. Um, at some point, though, in the conversation, they'll say, oh, that's interesting. Will you send me the one pager? Or, you know, you'll attach the one pager to the email and that little blurb that uh, got you the attention of the investor, then he or she'll look at that one pager. They're looking at that one pager to get a sense of whether or not it's worth them spending 20 or 30 minutes with you, right? So really, that's what you need to keep in mind. It's not there to answer every single question they might have, just enough for them to say, yeah, I want to spend the next 30 minutes of my life uh, actually meeting with this founder and, and asking him her questions. Okay, uh, so what are some of the corollaries? And I started to, I started to talk about these uh, just a moment ago. So it's one page, so it needs to be very concise. It's got to explain what you do. Now, it does not need to go into every nuance or feature. Uh, for, you just can't in one page. It's impossible to do so. Uh, so you're not going to go into that. You just need to give them enough of a flavor that they know, oh, I want to learn more. And one of the major points to doing that is to highlight what those reasons are, right? Um, you know, what is it about your startup that is unique and special and, you know, are your superpowers? Uh, now, at the same time, depending on what you're doing, there may be one or two obvious objections that people bring up. You know, you could be in a space that appears on its face to be a little crowded, but you do it differently, right? Meaningfully differently. So that's one of those things when I talk about an obvious objection, you want to make front and center. Because, you know, I, for instance, I was talking with a gentleman just before hopping on this, this panel. He was advising a bunch of fashion tech companies. And most of those were like, oh, my God, I've seen that a zillion times. Right? And then he told me, oh, but they do X, Y, and Z. I'm like, oh, well, that's different. Right? That's something I haven't seen before. Um, if you don't bring that up into your one pager, the investor may pass, be like, oh, not, not one of those. I don't need to see that. I already know I'm, gonna, you know, I'm not going to invest in them. Uh, so very sparingly, only when there's something that would prevent you from getting a meeting, uh, you want to pop that into the one pager. And the most subtle thing about the one pager is that this is your opportunity to show the investor that you actually understand what's uh, critically important to your startup. Uh, you know, what I found is a lot of people 
they're so deep into what their, their startup does, they don't actually know how to separate things that are important or, or just not, right? They're just simply not important, not critical, it's secondary. And there's usually only you know, one, two, or max three of these superpowers. So part of the reason it is one page long is to put this kind of, uh, this constraint on you, the founder, to rip out all the stuff that's not critical, not super important, not, not the, um, what I keep calling your superpower, and really focus on it. And that's your way of telling the investor that you get what makes you special. Uh, I'm about to move on. Are there any questions before I do that? Okay, silence is golden. Let's keep it going. Okay, so I'm going to go through a series of mistakes that I see in, in one-pagers. Uh, yeah, I'm a New Yorker, so I start with the negatives. We'll be okay. Um, I see a lot of one-pagers that are just blocks and blocks and blocks of text. Like my eyes glaze over just to look at them. Right? It's impossible for me to scan. I don't even know where to focus first. Um, you have now buried the salient points in so many letters that it's impossible to get across what I was just talking about, those key points that you want to make. By and large, you know, you know the expression a picture is worth a thousand words. By and large, if you can put together a single simple graphic, it is much easier and much more effective than a block of text. Um, so you really, really, really want to work on having something that is um, uh, broken up, easy to scan, easy to focus on, lots of white space. Uh, and that's one of the, the, the disciplines I talked about when I said um, it's, it's concise for a reason. All right, so we're going to work on that. Uh, number two, which I see, is, is it's more of a feature list than actually talking about the benefits and the unique attributes of, of your company. They go into like, oh, our software does X, it does Y, it supports this, it supports that. Um, honestly, I don't care about that, right? What I care about is why do your customers use your software to the extent that they don't want to touch anything else? And if you went out of business, they would say, oh my God, I can't possibly contemplate a future where I have to work with any of their competitors because they just suck so badly relative to this, this company. Um, and that's much different than a feature list. Most of the features are probably irrelevant, uh, but some of them are, are potentially relevant. But you have to think of it in terms of what's the benefit they deliver. Uh, and we can go into a couple of details exactly how that works. I've got a couple of examples later, uh, if this one's not totally clear. Uh, before I go on, any questions? Awesome. Let's keep going. Okay, a uh, related fail that I see is you know, make, turning it into an FAQ list, right? So you remember how I said you only address the, uh, the obvious objections that prevent you from getting a meeting? This is when the founder goes overboard there. They're trying to, because, you know, trying to make every possible reason that a, an investor might have for not taking the meeting. Uh, and sometimes this happens because they've gotten no's a bunch of times and they're just trying to put it all into that one you know, into that one one pager. Um, so it's, it's a fool's errand. Like number one, you're never gonna be able to anticipate every question, right? Uh, number two, you shouldn't be anticipating every single question because that's the whole point of the meeting, right? Uh, you just need to get them excited about asking them. Uh, what's more, this is often counterproductive, like by you answering the questions, sometimes that gets me thinking about things I wouldn't have otherwise thought of. Or I would not have thought were that, that big a deal, but since you raised it, well, it must be a big deal. Maybe I was wrong in thinking it wasn't such a big deal. And last but not least, like you end up with all this trivia that's just distracting from your core message. Um, so I see this from time to time. Don't be, you know, don't be that guy. Uh, questions? Okay, this will all be a lot more concrete in a little bit because I do have examples that I'm gonna go through. Uh, now this one I don't see that often. I call it the teaser. I don't know if, you know, we haven't, we haven't flown in a while, or at least I haven't, but you know how you sometimes when you're at the airport, you would pass these, you know, these signs on the jetway and it's like, you, you don't even know what company it is. Or it might just be like, X is coming. I'm like, great, I have no idea what X is. I'm too busy to Google it, right? So I totally don't care. Um, there may be a point, like, I don't know if you're marketing a movie where having teasers make sense, 
but not on a one pager, right? Do not make me think, right? Uh, do not make any investor think if you don't have to. Uh, we're just not going to. We have too many, too many other clearer requests for our time. So we're just going to put that aside and say, eh, not that interesting. Oh, I see people are uh, raising their hands in the actual Q&A, so I should probably look at that. Um, why can't... Um, for some reason, the Q&A is not showing up here when I'm full screen. So I got you, uh, Andrew. Don't worry. Oh, would you mind? Yeah. If the person asking the question doesn't want to come off mute, uh, Saja, if you wouldn't mind just reading the question. So we have a question from Adam Wilbrick. Any tips on framing the problem statement, especially if the problem is multifaceted? Um, yes. So we're going to do two things, Adam. Uh, I'm going to give you some examples, and then uh, I'll take questions at the end. And in fact, I don't know, Sasha, if you support this, I'm willing to relinquish the share. And if any of you have one pagers that you want to pick up, we can workshop them together. So I'll tell you what, Adam, uh, <laughs> you just bought yourself some stage time. Get your one pager up uh, in the background, and when we're done going through the examples, I'm going to turn the screen over to you. How does that sound? Uh, at this point, you can like you know chat with. Oh my God, no, not me. If if you don't want to do that, it's not not yet, not yet. He's not ready yet. He doesn't have it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, in that case, someone else will, and maybe I'll just pull you forward, and you can um, you can verbally explain what you're doing, and I can I can give you more concrete examples. Okay, let's keep it going then. Um, I see this one from time to time, and it makes me want to bang my head against a wall. Um, I see two page one pagers, right? And you would think that it's blindingly apparent that a one pager has one page because, well, for fuck's sake, that's what it's called. But um, no, I see two pagers. Uh, listen, it is arbitrary, but it's not arbitrary, right? This is our way of saying respect our time. If we didn't say it was one page, you could do two pages, I'm sure I would get three page, two pagers right? This is our way of saying, just cut to the chase. Show me you know what's important. Now, I inevitably get someone that says, well, you know, my economy, what I'm doing is very, very complicated. It's multi-tier, it's two parts, we're a two-sided marketplace, we're a four-sided marketplace. There's deep tech here. Like, yeah. you are not a special snowflake. I have worked with thousands of companies, no exception. Well, let me rephrase that. I've seen thousands of companies. I've worked with hundreds of them. Not one of them, not a single one, has gotten to the point where they could not get their, their point across on one pager. Remembering, you just need to get the meeting, right? You can do that in one pager. It's not that crazy hard. Um, let's, let's change it from negative to positive now, right? So what actually goes into a good one pager? Uh, number one, a headline or a short description. Right, just usually, almost always, very top of the page. Right, you got to get your investor thinking in the right direction. You are then going to go through the problem you're solving and how you're solving it. You may need screenshots or a picture of the product. You may not. Um, you're going to need to cover your business model and your market size. Um, actually, I should flip the order on that because it's impossible to really show your market size until you've explained your business model. I'll explain that in a little more detail in a moment. You want to include your go-to-market strategy. You want to show traction. Uh, hint, hint, if I don't see traction, I will assume you have none. Uh, you want to address your competition, uh, not in a super detailed sort of way, but in an obvious objection sort of way. Right? This is why we're so much better and different, and you know, we can move on. Uh, you want to have the fundraising details. Otherwise, what's the point? Um, just to go a little, a little deeper on that one for a moment. There was a period in time a couple of years ago where it became vogue not to include it or to put a deck without the ask in it. Uh, thankfully, I'm not seeing that as much. Um, one of the reasons I am very, very, very opposed to that is if I'm going to take the meeting with you or not, part of my decision is what are you raising? If you're raising a round that's too big for me, why am I wasting your time? Why am I taking up my time? I can just look at how much you're raising and say, that round size is not for me. Right, so you must, must, must have that in here. And last but not least, your contact info. Sometimes it's in the email, sometimes it's not, but why make me hunt for it? Just leave it there front and center. Before I go on, any questions on, wait, I don't see X. Why isn't X there? Or, hey, do I really need Y?
wow, I must be on top of my game if I'm that clear the first time around. Are we sure? No questions? <laughs> yeah, we got no questions. Okay, great. Let's keep it going. Uh, let's go into a couple of examples. Okay, so this is a company in Dreamit Urban Tech. They're all Dreamit companies. This one's in the prop tech or real estate technology space. It's a company called Cherry. Um, I want to take you through a couple of things about this that I like and even one or two things that I don't like. I'm going to do this for each one of them. Um, note that there is this kind of breakdown of the page between one third and two thirds. Uh, for some reason, breaking it up 50-50 is hard on the eye. I don't really like it. But one third, two thirds works pretty well because there are inevitably some things that don't take up space that can fit well in the one third column and other things that you know just take more space and they fit in the two thirds width column. So that's, um, you know, that's a good layout in many respects. Uh, if you look closely, the fundraising, fundraising details are right there in the... Sorry about that, guys. Tell me what the questions are. All right, so we got from Dean. What are your thoughts on hyperlinks within the one pager that allow the investor to look up more info? So I don't particularly like them. So number one, it's a cheat, right? It's your way of saying, I couldn't get it all into the one pager, so click through and do something else. Right? No, it should stand alone. Uh, number two, also, I find that like, if they look like hyperlinks, it's not aesthetically pleasing. And if they don't look like hyperlinks, I don't know where they are. Right? I don't see them as much. Uh, so it's a bit of a cheat. It's also not as effective depending on how you do it. Um, so I, just, I generally don't like it. Where I would consider a hyperlink would be you know, when you're doing the intro request email, like, Hey, Anastasia, I see you're connected to KP. I think he would be really interested in my start because I do X, Y, Z, and he's very active in the built environment. Um, you know, would you, you know, do you think he'd like to take a look at my one page or attached? Uh, alternatively, I have a two minute explainer video if he'd prefer to look at that link. Uh, that's how I would use it, right? And the reason I would use it that way is it's, that video is then giving the target the option of consuming the material visually versus, um, you know, sorry, in video form versus in written form. But if it's important, it goes in the one pager. If it's not important and you would otherwise link to it, it doesn't go here. Like get the meeting. Um, other questions? So Jackson just wants to know if we can get a copy of this deck. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Yes, I'll make a note to myself. I'll make sure I'll send it to you, Anastasia, okay? No problem. Uh, cool. So just, uh, did, uh, did I talk about the things that I liked here? Like, it, I'll go through them very, very quickly if I haven't. You talked about what you liked. I think you, were, you have not talked about what you don't like. Okay. The main thing I don't like here is just that it's very text heavy, right? There's a, there are a couple of big blocks of text that could have been, I think, presented uh, more concisely or more visually. But really, like, if you take nothing else out of it, it's like the one-third, two-third layout is a good one to play with. And this is, you know, the revenue side is a really, this is a really good way to get traction across. Um, I see another Q&A, but I can't get to it. So um, is there, do you want to read it to me, please? Yeah, they just want the copy of the deck, too. So okay, like we've covered that. No problem. I'm going to give it to Anastasia. Anastasia will share it with everybody. Everybody will um, okay, so this is a Dream at Health example. Um, this may actually start to address uh, the question we had earlier from Adam, I believe, about you know complex, um, you know complex problems or you know, products, right? So this is actually a pretty complicated uh, product, but I'm, I'm going to read this to you and I'm going to break it down for you just a little bit, right? So we help doctors earn up to ten billion dollars of preventative Medicare reimbursements by engaging their patients between office visits, enabling proactive care instead of traditional reactive care. Our technology-enabled care coaches help patients follow the, pay, the provider's care plans to improve patient uh, outcomes. So it's a little bit of a multi-parter. I do like the fact that they quantified the value right up there before I've looked at anything else. It's a little long. Like you could probably kill that first, uh, sorry, the second sentence at the end of the day and let it take place later on. But I, I do like how they got that value up front. Uh, also, if you skew all the way down to the bottom, I like the way they did their team. Team, 20 plus years in healthcare, 18 plus in software, 
logos across the bottom, uh, you know, very recognizable logos. So instant street cred, uh, good answer to the why them um, there. So that's really good too. You will notice there is no contact info. Oops, that's a fail. Easy fix. They could have just put another line on the bottom underneath the logos and been done with it. Um, now, this is going to be a, some people love it, some people hate it, but I, clearly I'm right because I'm giving the presentation. The competitive landscape. If you look over here, what they've basically done is they've taken what could be a very good slide for their deck and tried to shrink it down into one eighth of a page. Doesn't work for me. It's ugly. I don't like it. Um, and, and I think it just detracts too much. I mean, this page looks pretty busy. Uh, I prefer, generally speaking, for competitive landscape, uh, this is one of the places where text actually works. And the text would be something like, unlike example A, example B, example C, company name is the only that, whatever, finish that sentence. That's enough. That's usually enough. Occasionally, you're a two-sided marketplace, so you have to go, or you deal with two different types of the problem. So it's a two-sentence, right? Unlike A and B and C who do X, we do Y. Unlike X, Y, and Z, we also do A. It's a little bit longer, but I would do that instead. Uh, one of the things that uh, I want to call your attention to here is they didn't show a, a screenshot here. It wasn't necessary for them to show a screenshot. Uh, what was more important for them was to talk about the workflow. Like how exactly does it work? So they put it out just in a very uh, simple visual map from A to B to C to D to E. That works pretty well. Uh, also, they've got these logos here that they use to illustrate traction. I find this chart to be a little bit busy. Right approach, poor execution. Uh, but, um, you know, the logos are a good way to highlight that. Um, cool. I think that's the main, those are the main things I wanted to talk about on this example. Questions here before I move on. Okay, I'm just going to highlight two other, one other thing from this in the prior slide, if you look at them. Um, one of the things that they're quite good at is they choose a color scheme and they stick to it, right? So here it's red, you know, red on white. Here it's, you know, blue, light blue and dark blue. Uh, so you can really see the stuff that's not blue in this case. It pops. And we're going to have an example later on that really uses that effect well. But it's something to think about and keep in the back of your mind because it's the equivalent of highlighting, right? Um, if you use it properly, the things that are critical, extra critical, will jump right out. Okay, moving right along, this is a uh, construction tech startup called Noify. Um, clear and succinct tagline, right? You know, a platform providing business management tools and real-time business intelligence for construction companies. I got it, right? Right away, I understand what it is. Construction is administratively complex. Contractors don't shine at administrative work. If you've ever had somebody come in and work on your apartment, you know, they had to do, you know, I don't know, a plumber or, you know, a roofer, like you get it, right? This is not what they, they're, they're great craftsmen. They're just not good at everything else. Now, what, uh, what they do uniquely here that is something that you might consider for your startup is how they do the solution. So rather than have like a solution statement and then screenshots differently, they take the screenshot both from the, the desktop ver, uh, part of the software and from the mobile app, and they use that with call outs to show how they solve a problem. And they use this all in uh, benefit X from feature Y or fe feature Y to cause benefit X format, right? So things like, you know, real-time job costing and PL, PL analytics, that's the feature. So you know how you're doing it every step of the way, right? A lot of these contractors don't even know if they're losing money on the project until the end because they can't calculate these numbers in real time. So the benefit is they know where they are at every step in the process. The feature is this real-time job costing, right? That's a format that's very powerful. And they actually use that, you know, with, with the part of that screen that, uh, that highlights it. Um, you don't even need the screenshot in some cases. It could just be like those statements around maybe an icon that illustrates that point. Uh, but anyway, this is a very powerful potential tool to have when you think about putting your, your one pager together. Um, also what they did, which was super clever, a little ballsy, right? 
the, most of the people out there, most of the subcontractors and the small contractors, they just use Excel, nothing else. They don't have software for this. And I know you've been told like, oh, don't ever say I have no competition. It's a rookie error, which is totally true. But you know, the reason we say that is you need to know where the bar is. Like, you have to be a quantum level better than whatever other people are using. So when you say I have no competition, it's like, no, of course you do. People are doing it somehow. So what they've telegraphed very effectively is, um, hey, we know what we're competing with. We're competing with Excel. All those other guys you may have heard of, like they're all small fry. And that's an interesting invitation to, to talk about it. Like really, number one competitor, what about X? What about Y? What about Z? Like they're small. Like really 98% of the people we talk to, Excel. Um, anyway, so I like that. I wanted to call that out. Um, I do like their traction graphic. Like they've got the logos of their competitors on a map. It's nice. But I think the 400 subcontractors, um, that number gets lost. I would have called that out better uh, if I were them. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot of extra text here that's not critical, right? You'll see like a lot of these things under the metrics and a lot of these things under, um, you know, the traction side probably could have just been omitted. A um, couple of other things on this. Um, the fundraising goal, like this is a weird place to put it. It kind of gets lost. Uh, so it's not the best place to put it. Also, there's no contact info, not here, not here, not here. Um, and when you look at the team slide, it's really just who they are. There's nothing there about the fact that like they both come from contractor backgrounds and you know, I think one of them had a prior startup. So that part is, is not as good as it could have been. So key takeaway from this, this is an interesting format for the solution and getting you know, what you do along. And this is kind of a one way to telegraph or one thing to consider when really, you know, you don't have a lot of purpose-built solutions for what you're doing. Questions before I go on to another example. Silence is golden. Uh, another construction tech startup. This is one where I pointed out, to, I wanted to point out to you the use of color. Um, now, I'm sure the first thing that jumped out at you are all the yellow circles and the yellow rectangles. Now, given the scheme that they've chosen, your eyes immediately drawn to these, and these are critical numbers. So it's actually a very good use of, uh, of color to draw your attention to critical details. Um, and it's consistent. It's, it's pretty much yellow across the board. Uh, the screenshots that they use are a bit small. Uh, you know, if I had to quibble with anything, they were really tight on space. But, you know, the key element here is it kind of looks like Trello, right? So they're trying to show that like, that's kind of how their solution works in reality. So it was, it was good enough. Uh, one of the other things I want to call out here is how they did their business model and their total addressable market. Uh, they've combined it, which is actually an approach that can work for a lot of companies. I don't see it as often as perhaps it should. But let me explain to you what I mean by that. Um, if you're doing a top-down estimate of your total addressable market, stop. It's useless. It's like saying, oh, you know, the automotive industry is a $18 trillion industry. I don't know. I should look up how much it is. It doesn't matter how big the industry is. You're selling cup holders. The way you come up with your model is how many cars are sold in a year, how many cup holders are there in each car, how much you charge per cup holder. You know, a million cars times four cup holders times $5 a cup holder. Boom. There's your market. None of those numbers are real. Maybe the four cup holders part, but that's about it. Um, it's fifth grade math, fourth grade math, right? It's A times B equals C. That's how you do your total addressable market. So that's why I said earlier that your business model has to come first. I need to know what you charge, how you charge. And in this case, uh, they're charging on average $500 a month uh, per client uh, or per project, I think. Uh, it varies a little bit based on square footage, but for the purpose of the one pager, the average is enough, right? I can go into a meeting and find out more later. Uh, then they just said the number of companies in North America and South America, they're already operating in both markets. So, you know, I'll give them permission to use both markets. If you were just in the U S I might quibble with it and say, you know, you can really only use the U S market at this point. In their case, they were operating in both places. So go ahead. They can use them both a times B equals C. That's how they got the 6 billion flows simply. Um, the traction segment, one thing they did in addition to the logos of their competitor, their, sorry, in addition to, in yellow, highlighting the key numbers, over 100 projects, 600K ARR. And in addition to logos, 
to show the, uh, the competitor, the customers they work with, they used flags to highlight that they're already an international company. Nice trick. I like that. Um, fundraising details, awesome. Super clear. And they also used investors in their prior round, including Semex Ventures, which is very well known in the industry. One of the few really good CVCs, corporate venture funds, um, you know, very effectively. Uh, truthfully, if I had to quibble about anything, there are parts that feel a little text heavy, but I, you know, I worked with them pretty closely and I couldn't come up with a way to meaningfully pare it down. Um, but yeah, I, this one's a pretty good example. Notice also, and I don't usually call out, look how they've clearly separated out the sections. Like, you know exactly where to look for, you know, each piece of information. So even though it is a bit text heavy, it doesn't feel as crowded because it's very nicely sectioned out. Uh, questions on this one before we continue? Okay, silence is golden. Um, okay, I ran a little long and a little bit longer because I ended up talking to myself when I was you know, booted out of the room or when I lost my connection, so I apologize for that. Um, I also like this slide because it's a phrase that everyone thinks Benjamin Franklin said, but he didn't. Uh, in fact, the original quote is not nearly as nice as this. So why don't we just stick with this, right? If I had more time, I'd have made it shorter. Uh, anyway, I do believe we have a little bit of time. And Sasha, how are we doing on, on time? So we actually are over right oh, now. Then in that case, we don't have. So here's <laughs> what I will do. Okay. I'm going to do a couple of things. So number one, my email address is andrew at dreamit.com. Uh, relatively easy to remember. You're welcome to email me directly if you have specific questions. Um, what I will also do is I will, as soon as I'm done, uh, send both Anastasia and Emily a copy of my presentation she can share with you. Or actually, you know what? Take it back. I'm going to do one better. I'm going to put it right in the comments section. Would that awesome. work? Yeah, that's okay. perfect. Give me one second. I will do that. Uh, I'm not still sharing my screen, am I? No, it's just your face. Exactly. Okay, perfect. Oh, well, I mean, sorry about that, guys. It's just your face. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you could do uh, a lot better, I guess. Uh, we could do a lot worse, to be honest. <laughs> you know? Uh, um, okay, I'm going to put it in the chat. There is the link to the Art of the One Pager, and I'm going to put my email address there as well. Okay, so Adam, if you want to send me a quick email about, um, you know, I'm doing X, Y, Z, what would be a good way to put that in the header or the elevator pitch, uh, shoot me a note. Cool? Thank okay. you so much, Andrew. Totally my pleasure. Rob, I apologize. Technical difficulties, uh, please forgive. It's technical difficulties. No, that's cool. That's all right. <laughs> and it was probably um, uh, on my end. Uh, who knows? I'm a New Yorker too, so I can I can accelerate. Oh, good. I, I thought you would just you know cut me off in the middle and say, Andrew, you're done. Get off stage. Get the fuck out. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to step on your toes anymore, so I'm out. All Talk right. to you soon and good luck.